Evening, everybody. How are we doing tonight? So I decided to come on a little earlier tonight than I said I originally was going to. Um, hope all y'all are doing well. So there was a topic that I was wanting to cover tonight. Um, uh, there's a lot of divisiveness in this country. Um, you've seen that throughout this last election, and it's still going on. And it seems like it just continues to grow stronger and stronger the day, by the day. Um, the pro-Trumps and the anti-Trumps, whichever side you're on, you're either with them or you're against him. And it's not going to change. The Trump voter is not going to leave the side. I don't care what Trump does. And the people who hate Trump are not going to change their mind. So well, with that being said, I mean, there's a lot of divisiveness in this country. But the thing that really bothers me is, is let's go back to October. I think it was during the second debate in the town hall meeting. And for some reason, I don't even remember why this was brought up, um, they asked President Trump would he accept the outcome of the election. And Trump, in one of his good quips, goes, yeah, if I win. So from that point on, it starts going Oh, Trump's not going to accept the results. Trump's going to contest the results. Trump's got lawyers up to test the results. Trump's going to test the results, uh, uh, con contest the results. He won't accept it. You know, there's going to be div divisiveness. So November 8th comes, and we all know what happened. And then November 9th comes, and the Clinton supporters are almost rioting in the streets. And I sat there looking at him going, well, where was you at yesterday? I know where I was at. I got up at 7 o'clock that morning to go vote for Trump. So where was you at that day? So since that time, it is now turned, and the irony is so, uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. I mean, it's, it's such a double standard. It is the Clinton people who will not accept the results of this election. They want to say she won by 3 million votes. Yep, she did win by 3 million votes. There's also been... What, six other presidents to win the popular vote or and not win the presidency? Let's see, Trump, Bush, uh, Hayes, uh, was it Garfield or Harrison? I can't remember which race it was. And Andrew Jackson. So it's not like this has not happened before and probably will happen again. Okay, yeah, she won by the popular vote. But our electoral system is not set up by the popular vote. It's set up by the Electoral College, which gives states the more people, more say-so. Um, it's been that way for since it was started, and it's going to continue to do that way. Yet they want to change it. But the the point I'm making is, I mean, to this day, they have still, uh, or sorry, I want to make the other point too. Um, yeah, she won by 3 million votes. Uh, somebody tried to toss in the third-party candidates in the states that it was close. Well, you're assuming that every one of those third-party candidates would have voted for Hillary Clinton, which uh, you can turn around and make the same argument that, okay, in Virginia, that cost Trump the race because of the third-party candidates. No, the third-party candidates were so disgusted by both of the candidates that they were going to stay home. Or, or they probably would have went to Trump because in most elections uh, when you get into a really tight race and you have a small amount of undecided the undecided is almost a I think two to one margin always go with the challenger and Trump was obviously the challenger in this race Clinton was running as Obama's third term and um, the people responded with how they felt with that so Trump was you know obviously the, the challenger Clinton was the anointed one. I mean, the Democratic Party basically just handed her the nomination. Um, she had to put down a rebellion in her own party. And, I mean, they really did a number on Bernie Sanders. I mean, when you've got 500-something superdelegates to three, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of one-sided. And, and that's where, again, the irony comes in. You want to change the Electoral College, but yet you're the party with superdelegates. You know, your superdelegates are, are going to make or break this. So, <clears throat> then you had that a aspect of why she lost the race. Um, and then it turns even to more sour grapes. Oh, 
the call me releasing the investigation right before the race that cost her the race um uh, um uh the, the thing that cost her the race was is she thought that she was going to win in such a landslide that she was going to places like Georgia and Arizona when she didn't where she didn't have a chance in instead of campaigning in states like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, her so-called blue wall. She did not even visit the Democratic or to the state of Wisconsin since the Democratic primary. That is a state that has not went Republican since 1984. That's a state that voted for Mike Dukakis over George H uh, or George H W Bush. Um, you, you know. Um, this is a very liberal state. That would be like a Democrat carry in the state of Alabama. <coughs> so, you know, she ran a very poor campaign. I mean, it was just, uh, I've never seen a campaign ran that horribly. And when it was just laid out for, I mean, she was deemed unbeatable. I mean, the Democratic Party handed it to her on a platter. Um, so they have nobody to blame but themselves as far as the campaign was raised campaign was run <laughs> what they under mess, underestimated was is whether you like him or hate him Trump is a rock star man that guy gets people out there I mean when I, what, the reason I knew he was going to win this race and it was really not going to be that close electorally wise is I would look at these crowds and he would have you know 25,000 people there and 15,000 people outside waiting to get in and, and he would just work that crowd into a frenzy i've never seen somebody that could fire a crowd up like that and it, it was just amazing to watch and then you would look at the clinton crowd and that'd be what 1200 people there i mean she didn't really um cause a lot of great enthusiasm um and i think too somewhat the clinton name herder i mean people are tired of the clintons are tired of the bushes are tired of these political families um and, uh, you know, that was one of the things that, that cost her the race. But what they uh, underestimated was was the message that Trump had that got to individuals. Hey, Washington's broke. It's not working for you. You know, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to blow it up. And uh, we're going to drain the swamp. You know, the, 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 the message that he was speaking resonated with millions of voters especially up there in the rust belt which uh, that was basically the rust belt brexit they had watched their entire manufacturing base being wiped out over the last 20 something years factories closing down people without jobs and they just said enough's enough uh, you look at two of the states that trump carried in the general election and states don't always carry over to primary wins don't always carry over general elections win wins but uh or two of the states that bernie Car sanders carried was wish michigan and wisconsin two states that trump carried uh trump actually ended up getting 12 percent of the bernie sanders vote because the message the populist message that trump spoke was not that far off from the message that bernie sanders spoke they was both speaking about trade that washington was broke and that people needed better paying jobs they just had different ways that they was delivering their message. But the, when you look back in those primaries, you would say Trump would have a five or six point lead in the race, and then it would turn into a 35 or 40 point blowout. I mean, you had 16 Republican candidates that was supposed to be the best field ever, and they threw everything but the, including the kitchen sink at him, and nothing stuck, nothing worked. And then, of course, he took down Hillary. People, they underestimated the hidden Trump vote and that this more message, he had one core message, and like Donald Trump or dislike him, because a lot of voters disliked a lot of the things that he said. Some found it offensive. They didn't think he had the temperament to be president. They didn't have the, the experience to be president. But change, change was the main thing. And the promise of bringing back these blue-collar jobs, uh, the reindustrialization of America, rolling back regulations on coal, this hit, hit home with a lot of people. Even during the race, the Trump people said that um, they got a 10% turnout in the rural counties that they didn't think that they was actually going to get. Um, they were shocked. I was not shocked. I was I, The day he announced, I said he was going to win. I said he's going to roll through the Rust Belt, carry Ohio, carry 
uh, was Iowa, Kerry, uh, Michigan, Kerry, Pennsylvania. I really didn't think it Kerry, Wisconsin, but I thought he'd be close. The only state I was wrong on really was um, Virginia because I really thought he was going to carry Virginia. I never, I thought the polls was a lot closer. And um, again, he barely lost that state. So you can just see how bad the polls off were. Now, I don't know if it was so much they were really that bad off. You know, there was a hidden Trump vote out there. But there was a guy who did uh, polling for the LA Times, and he did the same sample group every week. He used the same sample group of 500 people, and he polled them throughout the whole race. And his numbers never changed. Um, and what he, he would do two different calls. He would do a person-to-person -person call, and then he would do a robocall. And he found a five-point bounce for Trump in the robocall than he did on the person-to-person -person call. Because a lot of people didn't want to admit that they was voting for Trump. And uh, I, that was called the Bradley effect. It was after a race out there in um, California several years ago when a mayor was running for, gov for governor. And people were saying they was going to vote for him, heading all the polls, and he ended up losing. But, you know... And I believe there was some truth to that, that people were not admitting that's how the polls were off. But I think really the um, the core thing was is they just misunderstood how this message correlated with a lot of people and the anger that we have with Washington. I mean, your government's broke. You know, you're getting, you're paying more in taxes. You're getting less in services. And, and, and you know, this whole message of drain the swamp is it, it it touched it got so many people and um you know that that, that was really reason the trump won like i said i mean the guy's a rock star man i mean he, he worked those crowds i mean of course i mean he's a celebrity he's an entertainer but i mean sorry you know guys again i when i start talking politics i get off a uh, topic and start going back to, and start going off and telling other stories but the thing that I really wanted to close out with that um, I just find it ironic that we Trump supporters were the ones that was not going to accept the results. And it is the Clinton people who will not accept the results. You know, holding up shirts saying, not my president. Um, you know, he's not my president, not my president. I hear it all the time. He goes, people refer to me. And they say, you're president. I'm like, he is our president. He is President Donald Trump. Um, you know, no president has ever had this kind of this type of scrutiny when they've came into office, and um, that's just so. What is so just double standard of it is Trump was supposed to be the one who didn't accept the results, and now the Democrats will not accept the results, and um, they're never going to accept the results. You know, they can't stand it that he's my president. So, uh, <laughs> it, it's it's really I mean comical to laugh at. Um, that they cannot accept the results nine months later, still will not give the man a chance to leave. I mean, at this point, honestly, I believe if President Trump cured cancer, they'd come out and say that he's taking work away from the Grim Reaper. Uh, that's just how biased they are towards him. And um, they are the ones who will not accept the results, are not going to accept the results, and are causing... A lot of the divisive take place because the Trump supporters, hey, we have a mandate. We sent him up there to do stuff. So, I mean, you know, and so far he's did everything that he said he was going to do. He pulled us out of the TPP. He pulled us out of the uh, Paris Climate Peace Accords. He pulled us out of, uh, or excuse me, he rolled back the regulations on coal. He is renegotiating trades with uh, NAFTA that would just totally kill us. A bill that was signed by President Clinton. I mean, you check out the manufacturing jobs that was lost up under that time and up until now. Um, uh, um, uh, he tried, uh, excuse me, he it did try to get the travel ban imposed. Of course, it was struck down as being unconstitutional, and I'm not even going to debate whether it. It probably was an unconstitutional executive order, you know, I'll admit that. Um, and it finally got $1.6 billion appropriated for the wall. Now, you know, whether you support a wall or not, it was just a, basically a key, it was the keystone of his campaign, but most people really don't care about a wall. You know, I mean, we've already got a wall out there, and I don't care if you do build a wall out there, it's not going to keep back anybody from coming over. Um, but anyway, everything that he's, and he's going to take a hard line militarily. And he was just going to 
uh, have a tax break, which he is trying to push through right now. And uh, so every promise he made, he's kept. You know, promises made, promises kept. Um, he's done it. And he, he's not getting the credit for it. Now, what I would be doing if I was President Trump is I would be going to some of these House and these Senate members who are up for re-election next year and be like, look, you know, I carried your district by 65% of the vote. I carried your state with 57% of the vote, 58% of the vote. Either you get on board with our agenda and what we were sent up here to do, or I'm coming after you in 2018. And I and handpick Trump News, all he do is handpick his candidates, start running, and his star power, I mean, he could take them into office. The, the, the Republicans underestimate him so much that they thought that he was gonna, going to take down the House and Senate with him, which, I mean, they followed in right on his coattails and um, doesn't get credit for that either. Um, I, I love the fact that he's basically told the Republican Party he didn't need them. Uh, he'll work with, he's shown that he's willing to work with Democrats. So, you know, until the Clinton people finally admit, okay, we lost, and Hillary can quit sitting up there blaming everybody about why she lost. There's going to continue to be this divisiveness between the pro-Trump people and the anti-Trump people. And like I said, you're either you're either for him or you're against him. Um, to me, so far, I give him high approval ratings. Like I said, the guy said he was going to do everything he was going to do. He's get he's. Trying to, he's just got a, a Congress, which amazingly, not is amazingly enough, is Republican. That is not working with the man. And um, you know that's kind of really frustrating as a Trump supporter. But anyway, guys, I know I kind of got off topic telling them other stories about politics. Uh, that's always been my passion. But um, the point I'm just trying to make is, in uh, my cast or my first cast for the night was the Trump supporters were not supposed to accept the outcome of the election and yet now it's the Clinton supporters who refuse that research to who refuse to accept the outcomes of the of the race um, the irony is too much anyway guys thanks for all watching I uh, hope you enjoyed the video um, I'll think of another topic I'd like to get off my chest and hopefully see y'all back in a few hours until then, enjoy your evening.